Hey everybody, we're going to do chapter 12, Ezekiel. Dear Heavenly Father, be with us as we read your word. We just pray that our mind is alert and we have complete understanding and discernment from the pages of the scriptures for the context you intended them. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. We're going to pray from the beginning this time. I said chapter 12, I think we're on 13 according to my bookmarks, so. So let's do chapter 13, shall we? Or my bookmark, bookmark got moved. If it did, we'll go back and read 12. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy, uh, prophecy against the prophets of Israel that prophecy and prophet, son of man, prophecy against the prophets of Israel that prophecy and say thou unto them that prophecy of their own hearts hear ye the word of the Lord thus saith the Lord God woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing O Israel thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert ye have not gone up into the gaps neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the middle or in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, The Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. Therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God, and mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in an assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed, or daubed, D A U B E D. Hmm. Trying to figure out. I'm looking at this because I'm looking to see if I can figure out the um, if there was something over here that would explain what that word. I know what a daub means, but I don't know if it's the same daub. So I'm looking here. It has cross references to look, but we'll just start back with verse 14. So will I break down the wall that ye have dabbed or daubed with untempered mortar. Okay, so it means like daub it. it. It was built with untempered mortar. Okay, that's at least that's what the discernment and the 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 way that the context around it kind of shows to me. If it's wrong, comment down below and bring okay with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered and it shall fall and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I all accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar and will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they shall, neither they that daubed it. Sorry, something's popping in my head, but it might not be in the right context, so I ain't going to say it. To wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, 
saith the Lord God. When it's talking about how he will destroy or get rid of the the dabbed stuff with untempered mortar, what popped into my head is this where he, in a vision through Ezekiel, he's explaining how some may fall away by choosing to not continue in the faith and in their belief of how Jesus was their savior. Because it speaks about great falling away in the Bible. And there's, I'm seeing more and more places where it actually talks about how people will choose not to continue in the walk. So I'm wondering if that's what he meant by untempered mortar falling away, being knocked down, no longer present. I'm wondering if that's what uh, kind of like in a prophetic type situation, if that's what he's meaning here. So th that's what my head is saying, um, and I or the spirit within me. But that is the only, that is the prevalent thought in my head. I can't. I said I wasn't going to say it, but I I just I felt compelled, like I was supposed to mention that. Um, don't understand it, but I feel like it was supposed to be said, so I said it. So. Thus I will accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar and will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. To wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem and which see visions of peace for her and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. <laughs> Here, the, the caption above verse 17 is against the prophetesses. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughter. Sorry, my nose was itching. I didn't pick her or nothing, but it was itching. So I just kind of rubbed it. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face. Look, you wanted to hear that. I don't. Now my I'm sidetracked. Sorry. <laughs> Likewise, thou son of man. Third time's a charm. Set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the woman that sow pillows to all armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people, and will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? To slay the souls that should not die, and to save the souls alive that should not live, by your lying to my people that hear your lies. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am the Lord." Okay. Hmm. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. This is one of the few places where it just says, and ye shall know that I am. Everywhere else so far, it seems like in this book, almost every time, it says, ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Here it just says, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Not sure why. Uh, it just, uh, just something I noticed. Yeah, well, that was chapter 13. That's how it ended. Okay. So uh, we prayed before we started, but let's see if there's any captions or notes here for chapter 13. Um, on 13, verse 3, 
it, uh, let's go back and read verse three. Thus saith the Lord God, like I just said, it, how it ended and it didn't say God at the end here. It starts with saying, thus saith the Lord God. Okay. All righty then. Uh, it, it's when it says, thus saith the Lord God. Here, all it's saying is, ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Okay. The, verse 3, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit, and have seen nothing. Okay, woe unto the foolish prophets. This, uh, according to the study Bible here, it says, It introduces a curse on false prophets. They were like workmen who tried to cover a severely cracked wall with whitewash. So that's, that, that meant they dabbed it. Uh, I guess the way you spell dab or dab is D-A-U-B-E-D. -E I always thought it was just D-A-B. Um, so, so I did understand what it was saying. Okay, cool. Uh, in verse 18 of chapter 13, let's see, will we read that? And they say, thus saith the Lord God, woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people, and will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Uh, it says, The pillows sewn to the armholes have been interpreted to refer to either amulets placed upon the wrists that supposedly conveyed magical powers to the enchanter, or bonds tied around the wrists of the inquirer that symbolized magically that the accompanying spell or incantation was a binding one. So it has to do with that thing that nothing good can come of, and that is magic. All right. Those are all the uh, notes in the study Bible on chapter 13. Uh, we thank the dear Heavenly Father for the time he allows us in his word. I love you all. Um, anything to say, leave a comment down below. If not, have a blessed and wonderful day. I'll see you soon. Later.